Oh, yes. Right. Ready. <laughs> <clears throat> Hi, everybody, and welcome. I'm Zan from Fell and Fair. And I'm Samantha. And this is Samantha. <laughs> welcome to our video. <laughs> Today, our video is going to be on non-combatant characters. So, uh, if you are designing for a film or for TV or for a stage player for a LARP or a cosplay or something like that, these are going to be uh, useful items that a character who is not combatant, we've talked a lot about uh, armor and that sort of stuff and great things for warrior type characters, but for those who are, whether they are scribes or healers or um, housewives or just uh, merchants, that's the word, merchants. Merchants. Um, yeah, you know, anything like that, these are some great items for them to have. So before we kick it off, uh, like always, please do like. Uh, and subscribe uh, to the channel, like the video, subscribe to the channel. That helps us create more videos. Also, please comment. Uh, let us know if there's items that we missed or that you think that we should also tell people about that are useful. The two disclaimers that we always have is, first of all, we're not making any historical claims here. We're not telling you how to reproduce a plague doctor or a scribe from the 12th century. This is just general medieval and fantasy overview. We hope you find it useful. If you are an actor and want to do something super detailed and specific, awesome, good on you. You probably need to be researching somewhere else though. Or just watch the video and have fun. Lighten up a little bit. Just be like the rest of us for a day. Anyway, uh, the second one is some of the items that we will show you and talk to you about uh, have been given to us, so we did get them for free. We like to be very fair in our reviews of items, and we're only going to tell you about items that we are willing to spend our own money on and we think are really real quality. So uh, everything in here, like I said, I will try to tell you if it was given to us or if we bought it, but either way, the goal of this video is to give you not only some good ideas on how to things you should be looking for when you're building your characters, uh, but also some resources, some websites, and some links to get some of these items for yourself. So the first type of non-combatant that we're going to be talking about, this is a big one. It's one of the main non-combatant characters at Weekend Warrior, which is our live event. Also, if you're interested in coming to be part of that, we'll put a link below. Um, but is the healer. Healers are really important because they keep the fighters fighting uh, and they yeah, they keep the fighters fighting. Um, and so uh, Samantha has been a healer at the last two Weekend Warriors uh, and has uh, thought a lot about this, and she will actually be leading our healers at this coming uh, Weekend Warrior, our Healers Guild. Uh, and uh, she also uh, works here at Fell and Fair, and so has helped us design other stuff as well. So Samantha, tell us about some of the things that you like to carry as a healer non-combatant. So my favorite thing is an apron. My mom helped me make this because I'm not the most gifted sewer. Oh, well, you weren't. Now you are. No, I'm great now. Um, but I've got some great pockets because you need to be able to carry things like bandages around, all sorts of things, smaller water bottles. So bandages are good because as a healer, you need to have bandages for healing. So even if your game maybe doesn't use bandages for like... Uh, part of the role play and stuff. It's still a good thing to have as, as a prop and that sort of stuff. So even if you don't actually need to have them, it's still good to have. It looks good. Yeah. Uh, have a piece of fabric. You can tie someone's head. You can use it as a sling. Lots of options with just like a nice piece of yeah. fabric. Wear it like a scarf, something like that. But it's a great multi-to, multi-use, multi-tool. Multi-use, multi-tool. Multi-tool <laughs> fabric. Um, another thing that we had last year were these satchels uh, with our healer emblem on them, which is great if you need to carry just a ton of bandages, even better for carrying water bottles, things like that. We also have water bottles. Gotta stay hydrated. So this one's from Grim Frost. This is the big one. So this would be a great thing for a healer or medic type to carry uh, because they can carry lots of water to the poor, wounded, slain warriors on the battlefield. Absolutely. And then you've got this smaller one too. That's for your own brandy. Sipping it back, knocking it back while you're, you know, how little, the healers get through the day. Exactly, yeah. Pour a little on the wound, drink a little bit. It's, a, it's perfect. Yeah, maybe give some to your patient if you, they need to, you know. Happens. Sometimes yep. you gotta, gotta chop some arms off. So if, uh, so 
if you're also a, you know, a male he healer, obviously we have lots of male non-combatants out there as well. So there's other types of aprons and this sort of stuff. Once again, big pockets. We've got not, lots of nice blood stains and stuff on this because... Amputations. Yeah, amputations. Yeah, <laughs> this is real. No, it's not. We're, we would get so sued. Okay. Um, but this, yeah, so, you know, once again, aprons. This one's like a full one over the neck. So this would be something more like maybe a surgeon's apron that's actually trying to protect the garments from blood splatter, that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. While Samantha's is more like a utility, you know, like multi-tool belt. Tied at the waist. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's, uh, that's some great items for healers. Some other types of non-combatants that you're going to have are uh, things like uh, clerks and monks and clerics and that sort of stuff. So a lot of times having... Um, a thing to write in, so like a scroll or a book, um, is really, really key. Also, uh, something to write with. So there's a lot of things out there. You can use the quill pens and that sort of stuff. Honestly, if you're not trying to do a historical reenactment and just want something to write with that doesn't look super modern, you can get these little pencils on Amazon that are inside sticks, and it's great because it looks like you're just writing with a charcoal stick, but it's actually a lead pencil. So that's great. We use these at Weekend Warrior all the time. Uh, also, even if you're a combatant, now a lot of these things, we're talking about non-combatants specifically, but even if you're a combatant, it's not a bad thing to carry these things. I always have a notebook and a pencil with me as the commander on the field. I like to be able to give messages, send them to people. Uh, it's a great way to do diplomacy, send little messages to your enemies and that sort of stuff so you don't have to go into their fort and risk death uh, with, with that. So something else that maybe as a clerk would carry, so obviously money pouches and, and coins, or other types of visible wealth. Maybe you're part of a culture that doesn't have um, a coinage system, so things like arm rings and all. So these come from VKNJ. Uh, great folks over there make really uh, high quality products uh, made in Europe. They're not cheap Chinese knockoffs, so highly recommend. Uh, and then, obviously, like uh, Samantha said, for healers, things to carry your all your all your stuff in. Things like bags and all. So that's another another great thing. You also have uh, characters like heralds. And so both for healers and for heralds, having uh, uh, Weekend Warrior, uh, anybody who's a non-combatant wears something purple on them. So Samantha, your healers have little like... Little badges. Little purple badges, uh, strips of fabric there. Uh, the other people like heralds wear sashes. So having something that can easily identify you as someone who is not to be shot is is a great, great thing to have when you're running around on the battlefield. Uh, also, things like trumpets and horns in order to sound parlay or parsnips or par... Yeah. I think it was the first one. Yeah, parlay, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, horns, trumpets, great things to have uh, when you are out there on the battlefield and need to get people's attention. Also, remember, non-combatants are normal, everyday people, too, so they will need to carry things like knives to eat with. Uh, maybe you're a surgeon and you want something a little more substantial to, like, really get in there and lop off some legs and stitch them up real tight. Uh, so things like that, like sewing kits and big, nice, substantial knives for whipping off a leg and that sort of stuff. You know, people have to get amputated all the time. It's just the way it goes. Um, obviously, if you're doing this for a film or something like that, you would want more steel looking knife. Um, so those are other options as well. So, you know, everything that we talk about, we actually have a video on accessories, so you can check that out. So all the things uh, that we have there as well are great items for non-combatants. But the primary thing is, when you're talking about non-combatants, is what are they doing and what are the things that would help them in their everyday activities? In the same way that a farmer from Idaho may have a shovel and a big straw hat and a plaid shirt and not long johns, where are the... Overalls? Overalls, thank you. Same Overalls, thing. yep, same, same deal. <laughs> um, you know, and then a businessman or a, a fi someone who works in finance in New York City would be have a suit and a calculator and that sort of stuff. So just think about what your character is going to be doing and what would be the tools that they would need on a daily basis to exercise this. Now this is a little easier for people like LARPers and that sort of stuff because you're actually having to go out there and you learn from experience. You find out, oh, this would have been handy to have. I could have done some great role play with that. But if you're a costume designer or something like that for, for film, then you, you may not actually be out there living that experience. So you really have to think through the daily activities. What would this character be doing? Uh, is this a character that needs a big ladle because they're the head cook or something so they can taste all the food? Or is this somebody who's this cup bearer and needs a special cup to, to bear <laughs> stuff? Um, Liquids. Yes. Usually. 
Um, <laughs> but um, anyway, so there's so little items that will be specific to your character's job are always nice little tidbits. They add to the realism. Uh, and like I said, especially in film and that sort of stuff, really thinking through what these characters would have to do on a daily basis. Because, you know, a character just in a plain costume is not going to look as realistic and as convincing. Because viewers understand this and like they know even subconsciously that if all the little details aren't there, then it's just not going to be as believable as, uh, as you would want it to be. Anyway, thank you for joining us, Sam. Thank you for your help here. Uh, and... Yeah, like, comment, subscribe. There will be more videos every week. Thanks for watching. <laughs> I was just going to see how long you could go. <laughs>